For centuries, the people of Asia have relied on rice as their major food crop, and it is now a staple food far beyond Asia. So rice is fundamental to global health. It feeds about three and a half billion people. In developing countries, amid population growth, poverty, and the emerging challenge of climate change, families rely increasingly on rice as a relatively low-cost food. The families rely on giving rice for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's mainly rice that's being eaten by the children. But a diet heavily dependent on rice has been linked to serious nutritional problems among children. Rice does not have vitamin A, zinc, iron. Leading to lives of physical and cognitive struggle. Scientists are responding by developing new breeds of rice that provide more complete nutrition, including a controversial genetically modified variety from researchers in the Philippines. In my work, I travel around the Philippines and look at malnutrition in the country and find solutions. My name is Ellen Villate. I'm a public health nutritionist here in the Philippines. This week, I'm traveling to Antique Province. Good afternoon. I'm happy to be here. It's nice to see all my friends. Uh, this is where the Vitamin A program started. 27 years ago, we did a study of the situation in the province. And what we found out was a very serious problem of vitamin A deficiency. For the local health care center, vitamin A deficiency is common. We found a serious problem of seropalmia. Seropalmia is the dryness of the eye. So this is a blinding conditions of the vitamin A deficiency. This boy will be blind in his left eye forever. Uh, during the time that we were conducting the survey, number one findings was dryness of the cornea and, uh, of course, night blindness. After giving the three doses of vitamin A, all the symptoms and signs are uh, beginning to disappear. One single capsule, taken at the right moment, can save a child from going blind. Seropalmia has been eliminated uh, in the country, mainly due in part because of the intervention. But the real story is we still find micronutrient deficient children. So we're going to visit a family with uh, malnourished children. Antique province is the highest of, uh, in terms of malnutrition in the entire region. In the Philippines, children are still suffering from the lack of micronutrients. Micronutrients are small nutrients needed by the body. We only need a very, very small amount daily in the diet. It's called hidden hunger because the child may be eating enough rice so they feel full, but the quality of food they're eating lacks the essential micronutrients, which are found in the vegetables. Oh my God. Kumusta? Ano po paalan nyo? Jennifer. Jennifer Aguilar. 35 years old. Six children, one girl, and then five boys. She brought her child to the hospital because the child has been suffering from diarrhea and uh, pneumonia, suffering from severe acute malnutrition. That's uh, called SAM. The children eat more of raw rice and then more of junk foods. It's very clear she's stunted. Nasa red one siya, meaning severely acute malnourished child. So the consequences are her ability to learn in school. 
And the basic cause of malnutrition is poverty. Even if you have the resources around, like vegetables and fruits, they cannot purchase it. This is uh, alugbati. This is five pesos. This is 10 pesos per bundle. And this one is, of course, the string beans, five pesos also. The, the store is very close, just a few meters from the house of uh, Jennifer. However, the problem is Jennifer doesn't have the means to buy this, so she would end up just eating the rice. There's a missed opportunity to get the micronutrients uh, in the vegetables. Um, how much is this? Five pesos. This is very high in vitamin A. So the mother is buying this green leafy vegetable. Look at her baby. A very healthy looking baby. She dreams that her children will finish their education so that they can also help the family. In the Philippines, about 15% of families are really poor. Most of their incomes are devoted to food, and most of that food expenditure is with rice. At least half the world eats rice every day. Rice is easier to cook, it's easier to store, it's easier to transform in combination with other foods. Rice is an important source of calorie here in Asia. We eat a lot of rice, three times a day, sometimes more. This is the longest running rice crop in the world. It's been running since 1962, and we've planted rice on it continuously since then. ERI's mission is to feed the world. It's a scientific research organization, and our product is rice. These are demonstration plots. We show off the best of the technology. It will show farmers what to do and how best to do it. The fundamental role and mission of ERI is basic science with regard to rice. Half of all farmers all over the world plant ERI variety rice. A rice farmer's life is very, very difficult, and it's all back-breaking labor. It's not an easy life. But we start with a variety that farmers already like. These first three rows are the beginning of it all. This first row, this is uh, DGWG from Taiwan. This is PETA from Indonesia. Now, you can see PETA is tall, Digitable UG is short, but it's very productive. Look at it. Look at the contrast. The initial science was to breed these two together to produce the very first miracle rice called IR8. And this started it all. We'll take two rice plants. We'll take the pollen from one, and we'll fertilize the second plant with that pollen. And that mingles the genetic information and from that we'll derive a completely new plant. Or we can also use the genetic engineering approach of taking genes from outside of rice and introducing them into the rice plant to produce beta-carotene in the golden rice example. Golden rice was first developed by Dr. Inga Patrikus and Dr. Peter Beyer in Europe in the 1990s. So we are at the Genetic Transformation Lab here at Erie. They incorporated two genes into rice that made the rice capable of producing beta-carotene in the grain. Genetic modification is essentially a speeded up version of traditional breeding. We're able to sequence the genes, we're able to select and edit those genes so that we can speed up the process that evolution takes hundreds and thousands of years to do. 
This side are golden rice plants. This side are the conventional, we call it wild type. We oppose golden rice because it is dangerous. We need more safety data. Being a GMO, it could be opening the floodgates towards the introduction of uh, many more GMOs. And there are many demonstrations and protests in the Philippines. Farmers and protesters have uprooted golden rice in one test plot in the Philippines in August 8, 2013. This is a product which is live. It's not like a vitamin A pill, for instance. So it could actually interact with the environment, and then uh, we really don't know what will be the consequences. Yes, golden rice is not the only solution to the problem of micronutrient deficiency. There are also fruits and vegetables. That the long-term solution to micronutrient deficiency and malnutrition is having access to diverse diets. And I think that's where we should all join forces no, in terms of uh, really creating a lasting and long-term solutions and providing access to, um, to poor families. What we have here are common vegetables found in the natural market in the Philippines. Every single group here is only five pesos. That is only about uh, 10 cents, 15 cents. So we don't have to look for a highly technical solution of vitamin A deficiency when the solution is right there at the backyard of the farm or in the local market in every municipality. Vegetables are relatively expensive. Fruits are impossible. It's very expensive in the Philippines relative to the price of rice. Meat, forget it. Eggs, forget it. When families have most of their income devoted to food, they'll put most of their money in rice. That is the food that will fill their stomachs and bellies. And if we can improve the nutritional quality of food that they eat, that's the goal of the project. We don't want to give unsafe food to our children. All our scientists feel the same way. The question is that very often, these discussions are wrapped up in a whole mix of issues. Now, one is all about the idea that large corporations should not be involved in our food chain. Vandalizing the test plots is essentially stopping research. We have the same questions that they have. Before golden rice can reach the public, we have to get all the regulatory approvals mandated by each country. We're at the end of the scientific phase where we've been uh, putting the genes necessary into rice. So we're at the beginning of the, the regulatory process to gain approval to uh, release golden rice. Let peer review take its course. Let scientific investigation decide what is safe or not. Let the research continue because it's only research that will enable us to answer all of these questions. So we haven't really addressed the root causes of the health and nutrition conditions of the people in the Philippines. Poverty, hunger, the condition of our hospitals. We are at Angel Salazar Memorial Hospital. What's her name? Alain. Alain? Alain. Anong sakit? Diarrhea. Diarrhea. She thinks the cause of diarrhea is because of the water she used in the formula milk she's giving. More of the mothers are not giving breast milk. They are not giving uh, breastfeeding. So some of the children will become malnourished. They come here because of the diarrhea and pneumonia. And of course, this is interrelated with undernutrition. Most of these families live in isolated and remote areas, and they have very limited access to health services.
to reach the most disadvantaged population. We have to cross rivers and climb up mountains. Okay, okay. We have to appreciate the work of our frontline health workers. Siloichi Andres, Novet Andres, Jessa Andres. Joy has six children. Two were identified malnourished. Filipino families are really caring. And it's really very evident, like from mothers and fathers. Mga magkano po sa isang buwan na nagiging kita, your income, how much? Ikaw, ang balmo ka pangarap. Mga 500. 500 pesos per month. And that would be something like $10. They're very hardworking. Can we see the baby? <laughs> see? Legend May is exclusively breastfed, a three-month-old baby. She's healthy, she's active, and she's hungry now. <laughs> they have dreams for their children. They want their children to be healthy and productive. This family is really trying to give their children the right foods. Uh, they're doing some home gardening. However, it's still poverty. Well, the family is really trying their best to give a balanced diet. Still, there will be consequences of undernutrition. With the abundance of fruits and vegetables in the Philippines, the presence of fortified foods, and the possibility of healthier rice in the future, there is no reason why this kind of malnutrition should exist in the country.